I just finished shoveling snow and then having the grandchildren do some snow tubing and I came in and sat down, I was feeling fine. And uh, within the next two minutes, I started feeling weak in the arms and shoulders. And my wife and daughter attested to that because they were standing there watching from the time I started feeling the first uh, discomfort to the time I collapsed was probably three minutes. When the call was made to, to County Control 911, uh, she told them that I'm having a heart attack. John Houseman's coronary artery was 100% blocked, restricting the flow of blood to his heart. A procedure known as balloon angioplasty will be needed to save his life. Wellspan is now on the clock, and every minute counts. Heart attack or myocardial infarction is caused by a combination of blockage and clot or thrombus. Coronary arteries are the blood vessels which supply the heart muscle with oxygen and nutrition. Over time, fibrofatty plaques build up on the walls of these arteries. These plaques are made up of cholesterol, calcium, proteins, and inflammatory cells. As these plaques build, the hard outside shell or fibrous cap breaks, exposing a softer mass. Now platelets come to the area and begin to build up, causing a blood clot, which results in further narrowing of the vessel. Coronary occlusion occurs when the vessel is so restricted that the blood can no longer adequately flow to feed the heart. Without adequate flow of blood, tissues begin to die on the heart muscle. I started getting dizzy, so I got up to try to walk and I collapsed. My daughter uh, ran over and immediately assumed that I was having a heart attack. She asked her husband right away to call for an ambulance. I was unable to think for myself really at this time because I was gone in and out of consciousness. Now the excruciating pain in my chest and into my back. And then we waited for the ambulance. It takes only a few moments to recognize the event as a STEMI or ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. Electrocardiogram shows an elevated ST segment indicating that a relatively large amount of heart muscle damage is occurring because of the occlusion. The treatment for this STEMI is PCI percutaneous coronary intervention, commonly referred to as angioplasty. During balloon angioplasty, a catheter is inserted through an artery in the groin and is directed to the coronary artery that is blocked. A balloon is deployed to open the artery and press a stent or small wire mesh tube against the artery. The balloon opens the artery. The stent keeps it open once the balloon is deflated. The procedure is highly effective with minimal risks and few side effects. It is the best proven therapy to treat a heart attack. But deployed as a life-saving measure in the midst of a heart attack, every minute counts. So the phrase that we throw around, time is muscle, is very relevant. In the process of having a heart attack, uh, what happens is there's sudden blockage in the artery that starves the, the heart muscle of oxygen. And, and the more time that that artery stays closed, the more damage is being done. We need to get in and get that artery opened up as quick as possible to reduce the size of the heart attack, the chance of the patient developing problems down the road like congestive heart failure or recurrent problems with chest pain and the like, and even reduce their chance of dying uh, from that heart attack, not only now, but as time goes on. With the goal of reducing the time it takes to inflate the balloon from the time the patient arrives, York Hospital has committed to realizing a national standard established by the American College of Cardiology. This standard requires door to balloon or D2B time be under 90 minutes for 75% of all cases administered. 90 minutes may sound like a lot of time, but diagnosing the condition, admitting the patient, alerting the cardiac team, prepping the patient for the procedure, transporting the patient to the cath lab, and deploying the balloon is challenging under normal circumstances. Emergency conditions even further challenge the timeline. The emergency department and cardiology collaborated to do an approach that's called Lean Six Sigma. It's a methodology that's very structured. Um, it involves following uh, defined steps to address a problem. It helps us to be objective about problems and processes. So we first mapped out the current process. Then we found our barriers or our weight loops. And then we started dissecting those. The goal being for a STEMI patient, their door to balloon time or door to reperfusion time to spare heart muscle would be in less than 90 minutes of arriving to the hospital. Interestingly, the first part of reducing the door to balloon time takes place before the patient even gets to the door. Now our paramedics carry 
an electrocardiogram machine that can measure the electrical activity in the heart with equal sensitivity to the ones we have in the hospital. They will push a button and send the EKG to us. I'm able to get it to the PDA of any of our cardiologists. We get an EKG sent to us from the ambulance through the emergency room that I may be able to look at um, uh, at my home on my computer and uh, know right away uh, what we're dealing with. And together we can make the decision that this patient's going to go to the cath lab before they even get here. On our side in the cath lab, uh, the, the second that we hear that we're needed, uh, we, we get to the hospital and we immediately come into the room uh, in the cath lab before the patient arrives and have the room entirely ready to go and, uh, up to the point where the patient arrives. We have all of our equipment ready and, and sterilely prepared and prepped and on a table and ready to go. By the time the patient arrives and the cath lab is running, all the, everything's taken care of. The cardiologist just looks, all the yes boxes are checked, let's go to work. The procedure, while on the cutting edge of medicine, is really very routine. It takes just a few minutes until the catheter is inserted and the balloon is deployed. And the patient typically reports a dramatic reduction of symptoms the moment the stent is placed. The chances for a full recovery and a return to an active and healthy life are astonishingly good when the standard is met. I felt as good after having the stent in as I did before I had the heart attack. There was very little, if any, damage to the heart because I got in here quickly and they put the stent in quickly. I had comfort in the fact that uh, I knew that everything was being done as quickly as possible and, uh, and I don't think that anything could have gone any better uh, except not having a heart attack in the first place. Everything worked just right that night. Since 2006, York Hospital has consistently surpassed the national standard, deploying balloons within 90 minutes of the patient's arrival over 90% of the time. I think the reason we've been able to be so successful here is uh, we have worked hard on communicating with everyone involved in the process, from the people that are out in the field, uh, the EMS teams, the EMTs, the ambulance drivers, the doctors in the emergency room, the nurses in the emergency room, the doctors and staff here in the cath lab. Uh, we've met many times over many years uh, to, to hammer out the details to make this process as efficient as possible. It's a sophisticated methodology, but at its simplest terms, it's about people working together towards a common goal. Our families and friends are our patients, our neighbors, people that we know. Uh, it happens all the time. They're at their worst possible moment, and we have a system here that works to um, at least give them the best chance for survival. That's, that's the joy that comes out of work like this.